The month of April has been dreaded by many, if not most, taxpaying citizens, as it is the month when they all register, file, and pay for their taxes. Register, file, and pay. But like it or not, it is important for everyone to pay their correct and true taxes. Under Section 2 of the Tax Reform Act of 1997, in order to provide for the needs of those under its jurisdiction and care, the government has to promote sustainable economic growth through the rationalization of the Philippine Internal Revenue Tax System. All of us should pull our weight, we should do our bit, which is what the law requires, pay the right taxes. Parati kong sinasabi, dalawang obligasyon ng tao. No? First, uh, magbayad kayo ng tama. Second, bantayan nyo kung saan pumupunta yung buwis nyo. Hindi yung pwedeng sabihin nyo, hindi nyo binabantayan, kaya ayaw nyo magbayad. Para sa akin, wala akong karapatan magreklamo ang isang tao kung hindi sila sumusunod sa patas. Diba? With the money collected from our taxes, the government uses these to build infrastructures such as ports, roads, and pedestrian footbridges, and provides services such as medical care and social needs. However, there are some people who still do not know how to register, file, and pay for their taxes. They don't want to file, it's up to them. Then we will catch them and then we will file criminal case against them. They're supposed to be more intelligent because they can use the online facility, supposedly. But don't tell me they're not as intelligent as the other people who go through that same process. Kung ayaw, talaga maraming dahilan. What are the steps for registering, filing, and paying for taxes? Who are required to file for their income taxes? If individuals do not file for their income taxes on time, what are the penalties they face? Good evening. You are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm Attorney Rod Depomoseno. Tonight, we will discuss your legal rights on income tax returns, what you need to know on how to compute for your taxes, and what you need to do when filing for income tax returns. Our guests for tonight are Commissioner Nelson Aspe of the Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, and Attorney Noel Ortega, Professor and National Bar Reviewer in Taxation at the San Sebastian College, Recoletos. Good evening and thank you for being with us, gentlemen. Good evening, good evening. Depcom, good evening. Depcom uh, Nelson, and of course, uh, Attorney Noel. Yeah. So, this is very timely. Yes, uh, it's, it's tax season again. <laughs> it's tax again. season. Yeah. And uh, so we, we decided that uh, it'll be appropriate to be mm -hmm. tackling uh, uh, in, uh, taxes, in, in particular income, income tax. No? So I guess to, to, to first start off the show, um, obviously we're going to be filing our income tax returns on April 15th for those who haven't done it. Maybe we start off with the definition of income. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Depcom, Depcom, yeah, Depcom maybe this. we should start with that. Uh, I mean, how do, we, uh, how do we compute for income? Yeah, well, we that income, income that tax. is taxable. Taxable, yeah. Well, generally, income is uh, what we call a flow of wealth as uh, differentiated from a return of capital. So in the case of uh, those who are engaged in trade or business or practice or profession, uh, income there to be taxable means uh, um, the gross selling price less the cost of doing business and that includes cost uh, of sales and the operating marketing expenses mm -hmm. arriving at what we call net income. Mm -hmm. So for tax purposes, for income tax purposes, uh, the individual who is a businessman is, is entitled into um, the so-called additional exemptions on top of uh, the personal exemptions. But in the case of uh, corporations, uh, uh, the net income is the one uh, subject to the corporate income tax rate. Same, of course, uh, certain items which are excluded from income. Depcom Nelson, I think one of the common misconceptions is that if you're not really employed with a company or wala kang employer, if this is not your normal business, that you really don't have to pay taxes. But can you clarify, for instance, if you're um, selling something either over the internet or to a friend, and then you were paid for selling either your secondhand items or anything that 
um, your, your services. For instance, you wrote something online for um, an internet or an online site. If you receive income from that, even if they're not your employers per se, do you have to pay income tax and report that to the BIR? Well, anybody who derives income uh, from any activity is uh, required to file and uh, pay an income tax as a general rule. Now, okay. does it apply for, let's say, ano yung minimum income, or I guess, uh, what we call a cap, no? Uh, there's, there's, there's a certain uh, group of people whose earnings in a year are, don't reach a certain amount and they don't, file, they don't need to file an ITR. Uh, which, uh, ano yung amount niyan? Yung Dapat. pong hindi umabot doon sa personal exemption yung kanilang kinikita. Magkano Ang personal po yung exemption person? natin ay 50,000 50, okay. per So person. if, for instance, last year, uh, someone earns 20, 30,000 pesos, they don't have to file an income tax return. Uh, kung yung pong role na yun ang gagamitin natin, uh, yes, hindi na kailangan. Oh. Pero balikan natin, if that guy has been telling the world that he is engaged in trade or business or practice or profession, he still have the duty to file an income tax. Regardless if his income does not reach 50,000 pesos. Yes, yes. Uh, Attorney Noel, um, there are exact, uh, certain terms, no? uh, exemptions and then deductions. Can you, yes. can we, uh, again, for those who are, are watching or not too familiar with uh, tax accounting, you know, can you explain how these exemptions and deduction, deductions work for their benefit? Yes, when we uh, talk about exemptions, uh, well, this will uh, still denote uh, items of receipt, although the law would uh, recognize them as excluded in the computation for the gross income. Mm -hmm. This we may uh, exemplify the means of, uh, like for example, the proceeds from life insurance. Mm -hmm. This will still uh, uh, denote the concept of income. a flow mm -hmm. of wealth coming to a person, mm -hmm. but uh, that is excluded mm -hmm. by law. Mm -hmm. Another example will be the when inheritance. When excluded, it's not in include, included in the computation of income that's going to be taxable. Yes, right. yes. Right. Another example is uh, the uh, device or the uh, gift that one receives. Mm -hmm. okay. So that uh, property or uh, cash that is received, although a flow of wealth, okay, will not really be uh, considered as taxable. Okay, that is expressly provided under our law. Well, um, not taxable as income, but not taxable, taxable by as, income. As, a, as, as a donation. donation. As yeah. a donation, but mm -hmm. the uh, person who will be made liable for that will not be the recipient of the mm -hmm. gift okay, mm -hmm. or inheritance. It is another national tax. Mm -hmm. okay. That will not, of course, be yeah. uh, the subject of So in of other words, this. for those people, for instance, that uh, received inheritance last year mm -hmm. and yes. gained, like, for instance, an additional... 50,000 or 1 million pesos from an inheritance, they don't have to report that for income tax purposes. No, it but is But they have to make sure they pay either real property, uh, sorry, real estate tax. Yes. Okay. And what about in terms of age? So if you earn income and you're below 18, you're still a minor, do you still have to file an income tax return? DEPCOM, Nelson. Yeah, you yeah. want child stars, you want child... Uh, oh, or even or those even who... Even sometimes you have high school students mm who work during the summers or they write part-time mm -hmm. for other yeah, small, um, yeah, small other, businesses. Yes, yeah, yeah. and then they get income from that. Lalo na mga bloggers, for instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will they have to file an income tax return? Definitely, yes. We follow the same rules as the, that, that of the adults. But subject, of course, to uh, a representation on the part of the minor, I, I think it's it's either the national, not natural guardian, the parents, or a legal guardian. Oh, that has to sign in their income tax yes, return yes. as well. Yes. Okay, so they need to get uh, the mm -hmm. assistance of either their parents or their legal guardian. Yeah, okay. So uh, now, how do you compute? Uh, just basic, no? I, I know that uh, for companies, for example, and even certain individuals, it's, it's a little bit... Uh, Confusing, no? Uh, there's, uh, you need an accountant for it. But generally, how does it how does it go? Income, less exclusions, like uh, ano yung basic, flow, least, uh, basic yeah. calculation uh, as they file their income tax return. Uh, attorney, no? yeah. Yes. Well, the system set in place here in the Philippines is one that is based on net income. So we really have to uh, compute for the so-called net income mm. that is arrived at after. Uh, um, mm -hmm. determining the uh, applicable deductions under our law. So, mm -hmm. for instance, if one is engaged in business, then um, 
we, we have to compute what is our gross sales. Then as mentioned by Depcom earlier, we also need to determine how much is our cost of goods sold. Mm. Okay, then mm. after having uh, deducted the amount of the uh, cost of goods sold, so may net income arrive, that okay? you have a net income. Well, yeah. gross income first, uh, gross there income, are yeah, other right. deductions available right. under our law mm -hmm. that after claiming them, such as business expenses or depreci depreciation expenses, Okay, for those properties that are utilized in the business, then we arrive at the so-called net income. Mm -hmm. and that, the, whole, yes. the whole objective here is that you don't want to tax people on the expenses. Right? Yes, 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 yes right? It's unfair yes. to tax them because yes, those yes, were expenses right. incurred in the course of business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Okay. And then oh, yeah. Depcom, yeah. you have something but to But ha I have to make some uh, um, sort of comments on that, uh, that our taxpayers claiming expenses have to be very cautious, mm -hmm. uh, especially nowadays, considering that, uh, well, the advent of uh, the requirement uh, for the withholding of certain taxes on certain income payments, or we call them expenses or deductions for income tax purposes. Just for an example, um, uh, for rent, instance, rent, uh, uh, one expense? is paying rent or paying for, uh, say, other services. If these are not subjected to the proper withholding taxes beginning 2013, at uh, the time they are required to be subjected and the taxes to be remitted. Um, the BIR upon uh, audit will not allow these items, rentals and other mm -hmm. expenses, to be declared. Uh, declared as deductions. A deduction. Okay. That was had, that, it had to have been subjected to withholding, withholding tax. tax. Yes. Okay. Withholding tax. So to taxpayers okay. out there, you have to be careful if you have other expenses that need to have withholding tax. For instance, if you're paying rent for your business, or for your personal profession, you have to withhold taxes on that before you pay your lessor so that the BIR will allow these expenses to be declared as expenses when you're computing for your income tax. And also, I think it's uh, worth pointing out that the, uh, the expense has to be in the course of business. No? Yeah. Say, yes. It's, yes. it's not, it's not, uh, it's not uncommon Sigur, where, yeah. where people will, will go to a restaurant and eat and it's a family <laughs> Uh, dinner or and family. They ask for the receipt. <laughs> they ask for no? a receipt. Yes. Yeah. And, so, uh, it's not uncommon. I know it's, it's quite, uh, it, it happens. I know it happens. So. Yeah, but that comes now. So, how does the BAR check this to ensure that the expenses are really uh, related legit, to the business? Legit business expenses. Well, uh, the checking comes uh, during the audit or examination of the books of accounts of the taxpayer. Okay, mm -hmm. so it can happen that. If you submit all the requirements, the BIR can go to you and examine your records and your yeah. and do an audit. Uh, we're saying though that uh, these receipts and other substantiation need not be submitted along with the income tax returns. Mm. They should be preserved. I think it's already ten mm -hmm. years since yeah. the preservation. Okay. But come, how important so, is it that the, the receipt, the, those business expense receipts, are, are in the name of the company? Like I say, now they're just issue, let's say cash. They buy paid uh, uh, pays cash, or it's it's just the uh, printed out the printed out receipt. Now, it's a gasoline station, it's just mm -hmm. the printed out receipt. How important is it that it's named to the corporation? The advice for that, and it should be in the name of the purchaser or the company or party claiming the expenses. Mm -hmm. What if you just have the printed out receipt? Is that will that be disallowed by the BIR in terms of? Proving that you have those expenses. I, I think some uh, a number of uh, POS machines now can print the name of the customer. Mm -mm. But so if, if it is enabled, uh, there's a work around there. As for uh, the standard uh, manual receipt with mm -hmm. uh, the name of the buyer. Mm -hmm. So but if you don't have that, the OR in your in the name of the business or in your name. It's possible that the BAR will al will disallow, disallow will that disallow expense. That, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, just a quick one, uh, since we're in the, uh, the topic of deductions, uh, there is such a thing as an optional deduction, right, which yeah. is forty percent. Uh, Attorney Noel, you'd like to clarify that? What is that optional deduction? I think it's forty percent, right? Yes, yeah. at present it is uh, mm -hmm. uh, fixed at forty percent mm -hmm. of one's gross income, mm -hmm. or in the case of individuals, one's gross sales or mm -hmm. gross receipts. Okay, that is uh, the deduction allowed okay, to uh, taxpayers as well, by the term itself, optional. Okay, mm -hmm. it's another alternative in uh, computing for one's net income. Mm -hmm. Of course, for those who are engaged in business, as uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, one can uh, utilize the business expenses as deductions. But in lieu of this expense and other uh, expenses that may be allowed, 
uh, as deductions is the so-called optional standard deduction. Mm -hmm. okay? This is a different uh, way or method of computing one's net income. The uh, good side about it is that one does not have to substantiate it. Mm -hmm. no so more you need not worry about the receipts yeah. okay? mm -hmm. because uh, once you claim it at your option, of course, there's nothing more to prove because mm -hmm. it is already provided in the law. The amount mm -hmm. is anyway fixed at 40% of the gross. Okay, so tip for viewers out there, if, you're, if you've lost a lot of receipts or as Debco Nelson mentioned, that if you haven't had receipts issued in your name or in the name of your business, you might want to opt for the optional standard deduction where you just deduct 40% of the gross, uh, from the gross income in yes. order to come up with a net income inter for purposes of taxation. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to prove that with yeah. receipts or so you, lost a receipt, or they, you, don't, you um, don't go to audit. May yeah. I just advise yes. that uh, once the optional standard deduction is uh, elected at the start of the year, it should be consistently followed until the end of the year. Until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. So we have uh, some questions from our viewers. Let's answer them with the help of our guests, starting with uh, Gerard. I'm working in Manila and I computed for my monthly taxable income, which is at around 25,000. So that means my taxable income per year is at around 300,000. How much should I be taxed per month and at what percentage? I'm confused as to how I should compute it. I, I think this is a, a problem that most people have, no? yung, yung the rates and, and all that, uh, especially some who don't really employ mga accountants. No? Uh, maybe attorney, well, you just, would, would you like to? Yes, uh, the, um, the computation for the uh, income tax uh, in the case of individu individuals is much uh, more complicated compared mm -hmm. to uh, the computation for the uh, corporate income tax since uh, under our law, the uh, tax rates is uh, graduated, mm -hmm. okay, ranging from 5% to uh, 32%. Meaning depending. the higher the income, the, the higher, higher the tax, the tax bracket. Yes, the higher the rate will be. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is uh, a certain threshold amount by which you apply the corresponding tax return. So if the amount is... Uh, somewhere there in, uh, at around 300,000 pesos, then uh, according to the schedule, uh, we might apply there, I think, okay, at present uh, for the first 250,000 pesos, there is this uh, corresponding amount of tax liability. Anything in excess of that will be subjected to 30% to be added to that fixed amount as we see the uh, amount there in the schedule mm -hmm. provided in our law. So what would be, gentlemen, what would be, what would be your tip here for him to know the proper tax rate that will apply to him. What's the best reference? The best reference is still the tax income code. tax return. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, the uh, tax code is there for, uh, for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can see the rates of taxes mm -hmm. and uh, the corresponding amounts of liability mm -hmm. per, like, on the basis of the net income mm -hmm. for the year in the income tax return itself. Mm -hmm. What's a form number? Oh, for him, it's uh, Form 1700, but uh, uh, considering that uh, uh, the, the one who asks is an employee, I think uh, we have a rule which we call the substituted filing of uh, income tax return for and in behalf of uh, taxpayers earning purely comp compensation income from one employer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got no other employment or source of income. And uh, the tax is to be collected on a monthly basis. In that case, is receiving 25000 a month. Uh, we have to determine further whether he's uh, single without any dependent or mm -hmm. he's got a... Or he has got a dependent. Because if you have dependents, you can, you can file a... Uh, for like those a, for those deductions. Exceptions, the deductions, yeah. no? Yeah. Simply so have to consult the withholding tax table on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So okay. at least in his case, if he only has one employer, does not earn income from any other sources, your employer should have been withholding those taxes mm -hmm. and will file the income tax return on your behalf. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the rule now, but the employer is the so one that files the, files the yeah. ITR. Okay. Mm -hmm. so our, our next ne question yeah. is from Ira. Our company has yet to give us our copy of our ITR. We've requested for this since February and followed up on March. Now that, this, that it is already April, the company HR and accountant still hasn't given us any answers regarding our, our, our ITR. Can we file a case against them to the BIR or the Department of Labor and Employment? Will we be given penalties for the incompetency of our company? Well, I'll ask the caller to, uh, consult, to um, proceed to your uh, BIR district office 
or to my office uh, uh, itself at uh, 9243242 or to me at yeah. 0917 well, to Depcom director <laughs> 557 <laughs> Two three zero four. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again? Uh, sorry. My official phone is zero nine one seven five five seven two three zero four, and the email address is nelson dot aspe at bir dot go dot ph. Please uh, tell us uh, the name of your employer, and I will simply advise that employer to go on with its obligation. All um, right. Ideally, those uh, Form 2316, that's the Certificate of Income Tax with on Employees, mm -hmm. should have been uh, distributed starting January 31, 2014, okay. for the year 2013. Okay. By the Depcom yeah. Nelson, talagang oh. sarili niyang mobile phone and yeah. his own email address, so he gave it out to anyone. So if you have concerns regar regarding not only ITR from your employers, yung income tax withheld, uh, you can reach Depcom Nelson. Mm -hmm. Alright, yan, diretso yan. Eh? Okay. Now from Chloe, is it normal for companies not to give us copies of our ITR? I've been with my present company for two years and they have never given us our ITR, though they have given us a copy of ITR 2316. With my previous employer, they gave us our ITR every year. I've also asked colleagues have worked here as long as five years and they have never received theirs either. Uh, Parang related to, to the oh, previous really? question, uh, uh, it seems yes. um, really? employers not doing mm -hmm. their job. Um, let me answer. No. Uh, actually, if uh, the employee has been subjected to the uh, substituted filing, uh, there is no need for Form 1700 to be given to him by his employer. employer. A copy of the form two three one six. Would suffice. Yeah, uh, would suffice. Ah, okay. right. We have issued uh, we have issued one says uh, uh, making this form two three one six as acceptable for loan purposes, for clearance purposes, whatever. Mm -hmm. But some of them still want to have the formal uh, mm -hmm. return, mm -hmm. and so our district offices are authorized to receive them if they so desire. Mm. Uh, but if you were an employee and you want a copy of the Form 1700, meaning the annual income tax return from your employer, you can still demand this? Uh, it's not the responsibility of the employer, but uh, the responsibility of the employer is Form 2316. And the if the employee tax. wants a formal uh, ITR form, then the employee shall file with the BIR. So he can request it from the BIR? Yes. All or right. download it from our website. Oh, what's Hi. the website, sir? www.bir.gov.ph Okay, so okay. for those of you out there, if you want to download your income tax returns form 1700 filed by your employers, you can simply go to the website of the BIR, bir.gov.ph. We'll take a short break for now. We'd like to thank Attorney Noel Ortega for joining us tonight. Thank you, Attorney Noel. Legal Help Desk will return, so stay tuned. Filing for their income tax returns can be confusing or scary depending on how much they need to pay for their taxes. When registering and filing for your income tax returns, consider the following. Your marital status, the number of dependents, your monthly contributions to SSS, PhilHealth, and Pag-ibig, allowances, and other benefits you receive from your employer. Your marital status and number of dependents are important to note because the rates as to which the amount you pay on your taxes depend on it. S, ME, if you are single or married but have no dependents. ME1, S1, if you are single or married and have dependents. To compute for your taxable income, you need to add your monthly basic pay, overtime pay, 
holiday pay, and night differential if any, and deduct from this any tardiness or absences, as well as your contributions. After registering and filing for your income tax, proceed to the authorized agent bank with your respective BIR forms. Always remember to register, file, and pay your taxes correctly to avoid any penalties in the future. You're still watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel with Commissioner Nelson Aspe of the BIR. We're also joined now by Attorney Romulus Patel of Vincent's Chateau Law Office. Good evening, Attorney uh, Rom. So, welcome. Welcome Good to evening, the show. Oh, so yeah, let's, let's talk about naman yung mga micro-businesses. No? I mean, uh, obviously, they... These mga micro businesses, uh, well, the yeah, income even, yung income even yung mga nagbebenta no? lang sa sidewalks, yeah, mga sa, uh, yung mga malilit na booths, yeah. yung mga stall, stall yes, owners, or small, small carinderias, yeah. do they have to file income tax returns? Um, there is a revenue regulation issued, actually this year. Uh, that's what we yung marginalized income earners. Uh, yes, they have to file, uh, but uh, they are exempt from. Uh, percentage tax. So mm, by yes, percentage so. tax what taxes are these? A uh, percentage tax is actually a sales tax. No? Sales, it is also back, Oh, nasa national national, national internal revenue code din yun, but uh, they are exempt from paying it since they are considered as marginalized income earners. Mm -hmm. okay. But they have to file income tax yes. and pay mm -hmm. the income tax. Yes. How do you define though? How do you how do you classify one as marginalized, other one being a small oh, or micro business? business. Or micro business well, that issue once was issued. Uh, it was it was uh, it specifically mentioned that its gross sales or gross income must not exceed one hundred thousand in a given month. Mm -hmm. In a yeah. given month. Yeah. So, pagka, kunwari... Year yata. 100,000. A year. A year. A year. A year. A year. Yeah. A year. 100,000. Uh -huh. I was thinking, parang ang laki rin doon. Oh, 100,000 so, a year. So, dapat 100,000 for the whole year. They should not have exceeded 100,000 pesos. Okay. So, they can be considered either a marginalized income earner or a micro-business. Mm -hmm. And then, Depcom Nelson, I have noticed, of course, pag bandang last year, November, December, there were so many bazaars. And I've bought in some bazaars na there were no receipts issued to me. For these bazaars that sold and made income, do they also have to file income tax returns? Yeah, those who qualify as changi or bazaars, they are required to uh, file an income tax return. But uh, unlike that of uh, a businessman or a professional, the ITR form is uh, Form 1700. Uh, at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just uh, explain the definition or the concept of a bazaar. It's one who uh, engages into a livelihood in, in not more than 15 days in a year. Um, if it is more than 15 days already, then that person, that party, ceases to be a bazaar or a tiangge or a privileged store. Mm -hmm. Uh, although it's still in a privileged store status, uh, nonetheless, these uh, persons are required by law to issue invoices or official receipts, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. But considering that uh, they don't have the capability of uh, procuring uh, some main invoices, etc., it's the organizer of uh, the mm. bazaar or the changi who's got to give them or distribute to them right, right. Uh, these uh, invoices or receipts. Mm, so if you buy from a bazaar and you don't get a receipt, you can report the stall or the bazaar organizer. Yes, that mm. would be a, a big help to the campaign of the BIR. I see. Okay. Now, um, what are the penalties? Naman, no? I, th I think uh, for a lot of people, uh, they sometimes tend to you know, kind of brush this aside, okay lang yan, kasi, you know, if I don't get caught anyway, and even, even if I get caught, um, the chances of me going to jail might be, is, is, is slim to, to, to none, no? Uh, is this true, uh, DEPCOM? Um, and maybe I can ask also Attorney Rom, no? Uh, first, let's go to the penalties. Uh, what, what sort of penalties are we looking at for maybe late filing or perhaps non-filing or the payment of the wrong uh, wrong taxes? Uh, well, uh, for non-filing of uh, income tax returns, uh, once we discover, of course, uh, uh, firstly, the civil penalties that of uh, 
assessing and uh, enforcing the collection of the basic tax, mm -hmm. plus uh, surcharge of either 25% or 50% of the amount of tax to be paid, mm -hmm. plus uh, interest of 20% per annum. And then there's a fourth amount, which is, uh, of course, consensual or uh, optional on the part of the taxpayer to pay, and that's what we call suggested compromise fee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Compromise fee in lieu of criminal prosecution. Mm -hmm. So if this amount is not paid by the taxpayer, the BIR has the option to go to court and charge him for the criminal violation. Yeah, and there is, uh, you're looking at real jail time here. Right? Uh, I mean, you, yes. can yeah, you, can, you can go to prison. You can go to prison. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And that's uh, mm -hmm. one of those, uh, among the cases uh, filed under the run after tax evaders program. And then that com I'm curious, how do you know that it's the official compromise fee that's being asked of you? Because before I've heard rumors na sometimes merong lalapit na either from the BIR, baka naman nagpapanggap lang na from the BIR, and then you audit sila and they'll say, you have to pay us a settlement fee. But based on DEPCOM's explanation, meron talagang what you call a, a, a compromise. compromise fee in order not to go into the criminal prosecution aspect of mm -hmm. not paying or being delayed in the payment of taxes. But how do you know that this is officially from the BIR, na, na compromise fee allowed by law? Uh, assuming that the taxpayer goes to the BIR office to file, not on the date set, but uh, rather late. So it is our uh, standard operating procedure that before the bank would receive the return and the payments, um, statement of uh, the penalties, including probably the suggested compromise fee, mm -hmm. would be there in the in an official BIR yes, uh, document. That, right? uh, if it is a return, then we have a space for the suggested compromise fee. Oh. It's a suggested compromise. Fee. That's mm -hmm. very helpful. So, pag kamera nung malapit lang and orally lang sinasabi na o oh, magbayad ka ng gantong amount para hindi na kayo maassess or ma prosecute, that's a red flag na hindi to official. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Um, we have an issue once we call that a revenue memorandum order, RMO, mm -hmm. and that could be searched through our website. Uh, just don't know the exact number of that RMO. Mm -hmm. It contains a schedule of the compromise uh, fee, the suggested compromise fee of criminal prosecution, depending on the violation. Mm -hmm. okay. But Very not helpful. all cases can be compromised, those involving yeah. frauds, etc. Fraud, well, meaning, right, anong example right. po ng fraud? Well, uh, um, uh, If you misdeclare, is that fraud? Kung liniitan mo yung not, amount ng income? Not necessarily. There, there's got to be a pattern hmm. established for quite some time that really there is a design or sort of an ulterior motive on the part of the taxpayer to really deprive the government of much hmm. needed revenue. Now, let's talk about the prescriptive periods, uh, Attorney Rom. Maybe we can discuss this. Uh, for example, I, I filed my return, um, uh, let's say in 2002, for example. Can the BIR still go after me later on? Uh, let's say there was a misdeclaration or, or uh, an underdeclaration of, of, of income. And uh, I mean, what are the prescriptive periods we're looking at? The rule is uh, three years mm -hmm. from, uh, from the time of filing. Mm -hmm. But in case of fraud, Mm -hmm. That is 10 years upon discovery. Upon discovery? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. So it's not from the filing? No. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. So if, for so. instance, you did not declare income uh, two years ago, and then the BIR discovers that you had income two years ago, they have 10 years to still from prosecute you for that. Mm -hmm. In cases of fraud, usually. In, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then another question would be, if it's your first time to earn something, a taxable income last year, and you still don't have a TIN, what goes first? Can you already file an income tax return and then apply for a TIN then and there? Or what's the process that should be followed? Um, we say that uh, uh, the TIN is required before any person could uh, pay any internal revenue tax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is incumbent upon uh, payors of uh, income payments to ask uh, the payee what his tax identification number is. Mm, okay. And the tax identification number is the start of the registration of the taxpayer with the BIR. I see. Okay, okay. so the so TIN does not, the tax identification number will never change. Once you get your TIN number, 
it will be forever. Yes, forever. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, we change the system, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I have a, a question regarding some mga OFWs. Natin, no? um, obviously, they're, they're abroad, and it's, it's tough for them to physically file their own I ITR. What are the rules when it comes to OFWs who are, who are earning abroad? Ah, okay. Uh, those who are considered overseas Filipinos or even the complements of uh, foreign vessels, they are not required to file because they are exempt mm -hmm. from income tax under the law. Okay. But however, um, Filipino residents, uh, resident Filipinos, but uh, they are earning abroad either as professionals or businessmen, they ought to pay they ought to declare their earnings abroad here in our country. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you find, how do you define a resident? Uh, because sometimes, for example, in, for some people, uh, they might be residents abroad. I mean, technically, they have a residency abroad, but they're physically present here for, let's say, 100 days, 150 days, or more than half, half the time of the year. So how do you define that? Well, there are 365 days in a year. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, stay here order of 183 days. 183, mm. meaning yeah, parang a little over 50%, 50 percent plus one. Mm. 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 So In which case, you could then the be called uh, a resident yes. for, purpose, for tax purposes. Except, of course, uh, these uh, OFWs and mm -hmm. complements of uh, foreign vessels. Even if they stay only for five months there, their mm. income for that five months is under the law exempt. Right. Okay. Okay. We still have a couple of questions from our viewers. Let's continue answering them with the help of our guests. Uh, Lee is asking, I have been working abroad since late of uh, 2010, since I work overseas. I've stopped filing for my income tax return. And just this year, I've required, acquired permanent residency status from the country I'm working. Am I correct in not filing for my income tax return? I do not want to come back to the country and be filed for tax evasion or some case to that effect. So, I'm a permanent resident abroad. Um, no more. There is no need because uh, it's no longer under the tax jurisdiction. Resident. But however, let me just uh, have a word of caution. If he has got a business activity here Correct. or has left some income earning property, say apartments for rent, etc., well, there is still a need to file an income tax return. For mm. those income coming from yes, the yeah, properties probably. here in the Philippines. Mm, yes. Our next question is from Marco. I have two thin numbers, one from a business that closed due to bankruptcy and another for employment. Which one should I use to file for my taxes this coming April 15? Mm. In the first place, having more than one tax identification number is a violation of the National Internal Revenue Code that is punishable, it is a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. So what should be done there is uh, surrender the latter one. Just to clarify on that, uh, Depcom, yung, yung TAN before, there was a tax, tax uh -huh. account, account uh -huh. number and then a tax, a tax identification number eventually you know, they, they replaced. No? Uh -huh. There are some people who had TANs before uh, yeah. and then now have TANs. So, uh, could there be problems there or the BAR has a system that uh, identifies? The TAN, TA the TAN has been abandoned, mm -hmm. abrogated. And uh, we know that that is done because it contains the birth date of, uh, of the person. The person. Ah, okay. Now it's no longer there. No, no. Okay. All right. So uh, now this time uh, Alexis is asking us, I'm a working student employed at a call center as a part-timer. My rate is 69 pesos per hour for five hours, five days a week. The accounting department said that my salary is taxable since they based the rate from the basic pay of regular employees, which is 12000 a month. Is this correct? We raised the issue with them, but they only told us that since our salary is at the 12K mark, it is taxable. Maybe at, at uh, mm. Attorney Rob? Uh, well, uh, yeah. minimum wage earners are not taxable. Okay. I mean, uh, they are not required. They, they are not required that uh, like the employers your... are not required to withhold any income tax from them. Mm. But for a 12,000 salary, yes, they are taxable. They are taxable. No. Because it's mm. over the over minimum the minimum wage. wage. Mm. Okay. okay, so they still have to pay taxes. And again, the, just for you know, the, uh, for the information of our viewers, the minimum wage being that's uh, I think uh, 400, 480 that, uh, 64 per day per day for uh, uh, Metro, for Metro Manila. Manila. Metro Manila. Okay. 
Our next question is from Eunice. I resigned from my company last August 2013, but I'm still working for them as a part-time employee on a per-day basis. Tax was still deducted from my daily wage. My question is, should I receive a tax refund? I'm confused as to how they do their computations. Well, it doesn't matter whether one is a regular employee or is working on a daily basis. So long as your take or salary or compensation is uh, beyond uh, the minimum wage level, I think we have to consider taxation. Now, just a quick one, um, and this is regarding CITUS. Now, we all know that uh, taxes, uh, let's say, especially when it comes to services, is based on where the service is performed. Is, is performed right? In the world of internet, right? online, now, sometimes some people, let's say, uh, there are some online companies that are registered in Delaware or maybe in Singapore, but the actual the service, service is yeah. done here, you know, or, mm -hmm. or perhaps even somewhere somewhere else. How how does the BAR? What is the position of the BAR when it comes to that the, determining the situs of the tax? Whether something is taxable, especially in relation to online activities. Uh, we simply follow the law. Uh, it's where the service is rendered. For instance, uh, where the service have, is rendered. Yeah, uh, we have resorts in uh, many places in the country, say Boracay, Bohol, etc. Yeah. But bookings are made outside the country. Mm -hmm. But the uh, service is rendered here. Yeah, and uh, um, well, uh, fees uh, or the uh, the fees go to the resort or to the hotels, and we simply mm -hmm. ask the hotels to take a part of what they earn, what are what is paid to them, as withholding tax mm -hmm. to the non-resident. So if the rule is where where the service is rendered. Yes. Where what about for uh, residents of the Philippines. So if you're a Filipino and you're residing in the Philippines but then you deliver work, for instance for blogs, you write a blog here but it's actually for a foreign website. How do you consider that income? Do you have to pay taxes for that? Um, maybe we could relate that to the activities rendered by uh, our, our business processing offices here, BPOs. Mm -hmm. or call centers rendering services to foreign clients. Mm. For what purposes we, we uh, take them as uh, uh, in concept of exports at zero yeah. percent. But considering that the service is rendered here, mm -hmm. we still uh, impose the income, income tax. tax. And lastly, for those living here or residents here but are not Filipinos, katsama na yung mga mm -hmm those that are you know filipinos by ethnicity but then um, either american citizens or other citizenship do they have to pay and file their income tax returns yes uh, resident aliens are taxable within so with respect to the income they receive here in the philippines they have to file their income tax return the regular okay so what on the side even if you're not a filipino you really have to pay your income taxes if you're residing here. We do have a, a recap, a quick yeah. recap lang, but the general rule is basically, of course, for all those who are deriving income, whether it's professional or, or through sales, the right? sale of, uh, I guess, your capital assets, uh, and even your, your goods and services. No? The general rule is if you have income coming in, you have to file your, your ITR, income tax return. It's most ideal to actually tap an accountant to help you in that, no? but for there are certain um, I guess uh, income earners, a certain level of income earners that where an ITR is not required, and that is uh, which uh, ano yung cap? marginalized. Uh, ano yung mar yung mga marginalized, those not earning more than hundred thousand a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And but also, if you're amount. not earning over the personal month. exemption, which is fifty thousand pesos, then you really don't have to file an income tax return. Mm -hmm. And then, of course. Uh, another important thing that we have to remind you, even if you're still a minor, even if you're a child, as long as you earn income, you have to pay income tax and file an income tax return. And then even if you're a foreigner, if you're a resident here in the Philippines or earning income from the Philippines, you have to file income tax return. And the deadline is already next week. It's April 15. All right. And then, of course, penalties, sir. Remind yeah, the penalties, them about... Remind them of the penalties. Oh. <laughs> Um, firstly, that of filing uh, on April 15 or even April 14 is already very inconvenient 
now that we are implementing a new mode of uh, receiving uh, income tax returns other than uh, those filing electronically. Uh, right now, we're uh, uh, taking off the stamping system. Rather, uh, even the non-payable returns are required to be received through our mobile revenue collection office systems, which is uh, uh, a machine receiving, uh, uh, a return receiving machine, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, of course being piloted uh, right now. Uh, it's a move to uh, make uh, the filing of returns and encoding of the data thereon and re in real time. Easier. Uh, to Easier. avoid some sort of anti-dating or whatever. And uh, the penalty, of course, for non-filing is uh, if there is a tax payable, aside from the basic tax, we have the surcharge, which is either at 25 or 50 percent of the tax, plus 20 percent interest per annum, and a possible uh, criminal prosecution or the payment of the compromise fee based on uh, certain uh, tables. Uh, again, I have to uh, advise our taxpayers to, uh, well, tomorrow we still have uh, time, but don't uh, uh, use the manana habit uh, until uh, such time that it's already April 15. Again, we say that it will be a long line at the filing centers come April 15. And of course, all the BIR uh, needs is uh, the payment of the correct amount of income tax mm -hmm. as an added service. Uh, those who are paying more than 2000 may elect to file uh, the, the amount uh, in two installments, one at the time of filing and the other one on or before July 15, 2014. And that's in the case of individuals either as employees or those who are engaged in trade or business or practice or profession. Okay. All right. Thank you for All mentioning right. that. Meron pala installment payments sa BIR. Amen. One at the time of the filing and next before July 2014. Yeah. 15. Okay. 2015. Ah, 15. Okay. Okay. And Attorney Rom, any uh, quick tips to, to mga taxpayers? Uh, ah, one okay. should definitely know, definitely know their before obligation mm -hmm. as well as their rights. Uh, definitely. 2014. 2014. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Kumuha lang ka. All right. That is all uh, the time that we have for tonight. We would like to thank our guests, Commissioner Nelson Aspe of the BIR and Attorney Romulus Tatel of uh, Vincent's Chattel Law Office. I'm Attorney Rod Pumuseno. And I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. If you have any questions or comments on our topic for tonight, you may share them on our Facebook and Twitter pages. You can also download the Solar News mobile app on your Android and iOS devices to watch Legal Help Desk via live streaming and catch up on episodes you may have missed. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.